What's good, YouTube? I'm gonna be back with another reaction video. Um, I'm about to react to seven reasons why old school NBA fans hate today's NBA. Um, so I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of older subscribers on my channel, so uh, let's see if y'all. You know what I'm saying? If if these reasons is the reasons why y'all don't like, like, cause I got a, I got a few subscribers that say they don't watch today's NBA because you know what I'm saying they don't really like it. But um, I said. I mean, I'm I, I see where we are coming from. Like, I'm a basketball junkie, like real real basketball. So I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it anyway. Um, but this era is definitely way more watered down. So I mean, I don't blame y'all, but but I'm gonna still watch it though. So I don't really I don't really knock y'all. I don't knock nobody' opinion, man. You know what I'm saying? So um, with that being said, we about to hop right into it, man. Let's try to get the channel to 10k subs. We have 5,200. I don't even know. We have 5,200 something. But, uh, hell yeah, man. Let's get it, man. Let's get it, man. I'm just waiting for this ad that, uh, yeah. Let's get it. Hey, guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepler. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Argus Hall. Hey, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Bars. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Bader. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at why old school fans simply can't like today's game. So why old school fans? Oh yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button too, man. It only take two seconds, man. Let's get it, man. Support your boy. Basketball. But before we dive into that, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is you guys, the Patreons. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. As always, is really, really appreciated. And I would say, enough said. Let's dive right into today's episode. So how am I going to approach this? Well, I narrowed it down to seven points where I feel those are the major points why old school fans dislike today's NBA. So let's start with number one. They've taken away the physicality of the game. Coming in at number one are the super teams. And just to be clear, back in the days we also had super teams. Mm. I mean, the 80s Lakers or the 80s Celtics also had more than two superstars on their team. But this all happened naturally. Naturally, though. Traits. Facts. And this is something that I don't have a problem with. However, what I do have a problem with is players who, in their prime, join other superstars in order to have the easy right, way to Right, exactly. In all honesty, I can't respect that. Guys like Reggie Miller, John Stockton, or Patrick Ewing never won NBA championship, but they stayed loyal to their franchise exactly. and tried it the hard way. And this is something that I truly respect. Another Gotta thing respect that I liked it. back in the days was that most superstars stayed with their franchise, at least for the majority of their career. I mean, Michael Jordan will always be a Chicago Bull because he played 12 plus years for this franchise. Ewing with the Knicks, Elijah one with the Rockets, Malone and Stockton. Kobe with the Lakers. I mean, you get the idea. It was nice to have the NBA more balanced than every team at their side. AI with the Sixers. That was something that was really important to me back in the days and something that I really loved and enjoyed. The next one that I have on my list is uncontested dunks. It is the 1990s, I am a teenager, and I have posters on my wall of NBA mm, players who so fucking on cold. other NBA players. I don't know what NBA posters look like today, but I can't imagine that you will see somebody trying to block a ball on the poster. Right. And don't get me wrong, of mm. course I can enjoy a nice mm. dunk if somebody steals the ball, runs to the other side of the court and finishes with a slam. But if the same player dribbles the ball into the paint, wants to slam the ball while the defender underneath basically is moving away from the basket, just that he's not on a poster, I mean, come on. Who wants to see that? A dunk is just so much better if you have a duo like two cowboys in a standoff, man against man. And one second will decide who wins the battle. If you are able to dunk the ball on a great shot blocker like Alonzo Mourning or Dikembe Mutombo, it's just so much more than a normal dunk. Isn't that what we all want to see? This intense moment where anything can happen? In today's game, you see so many players getting out of the way simply because they don't want to be on a post. Yeah, they don't want to get embarrassed. To me, that says it all. 
I don't know if the guys who were all the challenge, even a guy like Sean Bradley, who accept the challenge and wanted to help their team and were trying to block the shot. Those are real players to me. Mm -hmm. And the next one on my list is the center position, probably the one that hurts the most to me. Shaquille O'Neal, Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, Moses Malone, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, David Robinson. I mean, we had so many great bigs that dominated the paint. The center position gave the sport mm. of basketball so much. Again, you had those Western duels where two cowboys faced off, the little guard who was penetrating the paint and the big who protected the basket. Another thing, we have bigs who showed the beauty of their post game. It's all gone now, and I miss it so much. Right. Not that many great centers. And I'd, I'd, be, I'd be Michael Jordan in, in this area. <laughs> <laughs> Pat. The boy Pat. Talk your shit, Pat. It's definitely changed. Uh, the way that uh, teams play, the way everybody wants to spread the floor. Um, you know, most big guys now, instead of posting up, they want to get out there and shoot mm -hmm. threes. That's a fact. Uh, and you know, you look at all the big guys, Embiid, uh, you know, he's... Uh, the AD, he's everybody's shooting there. He spent the majority of the time, his time, at the three-point line, where when I played... Miles Turner don't do no post-ups at all from the Pacers. post up, we may go out to 16, 17 uh, feet, shoot our shots, myself, Akeem, David. But now, Przingis, those guys, they're all three-point shooters. Just because Dirk is seven feet tall and he's a great shooter, just because Kevin Durant is seven foot and he's a great shooter, that don't mean all you other seven foot dummies should be out there shooting jumpers. <laughs> you know, I, I was always taught the things that are difficult. Yeah, they about to get on their ass. So instead of stretching out shooting threes, you should dominate in the post. Mm -hmm. A skilled guy like me playing in the post can't tell me it's not a high percentage shot. Right now you got a lot of unskilled guys trying to play the post. Right. Who don't like taking the contact, which makes the analytic numbers sound about right. Mm -hmm. We've shifted away from physicality and shifted away from all that. Teams don't know how to play anymore. Like right now, teams are switching one to five. Yeah, fact. I wish Spud Webb would have switched out on me. Next on my list, I have the All-Star game. Watching the All-Star Games in the 1990s, I can tell you I was always looking forward to it. The best yeah, players even the one I was coming playing up. together and competing to win the game. And of course, for the mm. first three quarters, it was a little bit less Chilty. competitive, which means they would not try to block every shot, but there was at least some defense. The players from back in the days wanted to prove that their conference was better and that they had the upper hand. Right. And talking about the fourth quarter, I mean it was amazing, since you could really see that they really, really were going at it. Today's All-Star game is simply put terrible. No defense whatsoever. Uh, uh, the games are super boring because all you see is players getting out of the way so that the other players can dunk the ball. Right. That's not what I want to see. Honestly, it's really sad to I, say. It's, who, I can't it's whoever get the most open and shots that's going to get MVP. Are the rivalries. Like, okay. One thing I really, really today is also today were those intense rivalries: the Lakers versus the Celtics, the Bulls versus the Pistons, the Bulls versus the Knicks, the Knicks versus the Heat, and so on and so on. You just knew back then that those teams really hated each other. Right. It's not that I enjoy hate, but the result, the result that we saw. That you you won't get your money's worth. Saw, players who were fighting after every loose ball the intense foul definitely don't get your money's worth knowing that everything could happen this is something that i'm really missing today tell us about your rivalry with the knicks what that rivalry was, that that <laughs> rivalry man you said what rivalry boy, that was a real rivalry this is a big physical wide new york team that plays you tough and back come the ball oh he is ripped by sparks this has become a war Anybody that was trying to take something from us, that's a rivalry. We gotta add. Oh boy, Jordan, man. So, so do y'all agree so far, man? Do y'all agree? I, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. They, they hitting everything on the nose. Everything you play, we try to stick As long as Patrick is going to be there, as long as Oakley is going to be there, as long as Stark is going to be there, it's like fighting your big brother or little brother. You know, you got to let him know who you are. You, this is where you belong. Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move by Jordan! Oh, for sure. I don't care where you think you think you are. This is where you belong. 
And every game was like that, proving ground. You know, trying to gain that extra edge. And, you know, went from coach to coach to another coach, and the mentality never changed. It got higher and higher and higher. Next to have hand checking. Yes, back in the days, teams would not score as much as they do today. But that was totally fine by me. Why? Because I could also enjoy tough defense. And also, it was way more special if a player could average 25 points while being guarded tough. Well, we talked early in pregame about LeBron James being able to play forever. He'll be 33 at the end of the month. And we talk about the lack of physicality in the NBA, which allows guys to play differently and play easier. Because in the freezer here, in the era that, you know, these guys have played in, the Shaqs and the Charles and even myself. Call it the they, era. Okay, <laughs> there's no way that you could bring the basketball up and there's no one touching Without being pressure, or pressure. Right. So yeah, as the play goes on, Harper. Harper, there's no there's no one that ever gets touched, there's any pressure. See, if he didn't like that shot, he doesn't. LeBron James is the best player in the world, freeze it. There's no defensive pressure or touching because of the new rules yeah. in the current state. Now the next one that I have on my list is the flopping. Okay, this one will be a pretty short one. With all the toughness that we were used to back in the 80s and 90s, those so flops gotta were get just for that shit. Just imagine someone pulling off those flops in the 80s and 90s. I bet you they would be the joke of the entire league. Next, I have the variety in the game. Now that literally everybody is shooting three-pointers, the variety of the game has vanished. The 90s had everything you want in basketball, but perfectly right. balanced. You had shooters, you had slashers, you had dunkers, you had defenders, and everybody had their specialty. Right. It feels like all players are literally the same, and everybody is just trying to shoot the basketball. You have guys yeah. standing out there heating up threes that's really not three-point shooters. Right. Yeah, them boys be tweaking with that shit. That's all they want to do. But I still I still watch today's NBA, but there were some good good reasons why an NBA watered down for. I definitely agree that it's watered down and shit. But um, with that being said, man, I hope hopefully y'all enjoyed that, man. Um, I appreciate y'all. Tap in, subscribe. Um, y'all stay safe, stay tuned, and we out.